Good morning, Rock Worship Center. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today. Uh, I'm going to stand in just a minute for the reading of God's Word, but I uh, just want to ask you a question this morning. Has the Lord been good to you? Amen. All right. So I know He's been good to me. Um, this is the day the Lord has made, and He chose to include me in it. Uh, so no matter what happens to me, how can this day and any other day be anything but glorious? Uh, in honor of Pastor Mark, I want to start the day off with just, just a little joke. Uh, so I'll do my best. Uh, a mother walks into her son's room on a Sunday morning, and she says, it's time to get up, get ready for church. He says, Mom, I don't want to get up. Well, that's too bad you're going to get up and get ready for church. He said, give me one good reason why I should get up. She said, well, first and foremost, I'll give you three. First and foremost, I'm your mom, and I said so. <laughs> Two, you've been living with your dad and I since you graduated high school and you're 50 years old. <laughs> and three, you're the pastor. <laughs> so, if the Lord's been good to you, please let's stand for the reading of God's Word. <laughs> Today's Word comes from Psalms 107, verse 1 through 9. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those He redeemed from the hand of the foe, those He gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and His wonderful deeds for mankind. For He satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. So let me ask you one more time. Has the Lord been good to you? Yes. Yes. Please remain standing while we uh, join in worship. Good God Almighty Thank you. 
the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime. Jesus when the sun goes down. Somebody just shout out the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Y'all help me out a little bit. God is good. And all the time. God is good. We're going to praise Him today. We're going to give Him glory today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I like sometimes I, I I watch some of these TV preachers and stuff, and I'm like, I need to, I need some of that anointing on me. And I heard a I heard a preacher say this one time, and I think it makes you feel better. So, y'all do this. Look at your neighbor right now and say, You look good today. <laughs> Sam, that's my wife. <laughs> Sam, Sam, be easy. That's my wife. You talk to me. I set you up, Sam. But it is we. Brent, Brenda gets on me when I talk like this, but we had a conversation one day. Somebody asked me if I knew what God looks like. I said, the only thing I know about God is he's very good looking. They said, how do you know that God is good looking? I said, because I was made in his image. Yeah. Hallelujah. Brian, Brian just shouted, and listen, for my West Virginia brother about there to get that excited, he said, I'm claiming that one. Where's my wife? I want her to hear that. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. I, I, don't, I, I feel that in the house today, amen? Yeah. Summertime out there, nice and hot. Sun shining, everybody's got their motorcycle out there except for me today. Might change that in a little while. But God is good. I just I, I just can't get beyond that. We, Joe, I appreciate Joe. Y'all know me very well, but I will, I will pop up first thing in the morning and ask somebody unexpectedly to come up here and read a verse and share it in heart. I didn't know he was going to share that lovely joke, though. The preacher, 50 years old, still lived with his mom and daddy. I get that part about not wanting to get up on Sunday morning sometimes. Amen. Brenda said, no, I'm up at 6 o'clock ready to go. But let's just worship the Lord today. Guys, I do this. We talk on Wednesday night. If you find somebody in this church that you don't know, ask them their name. Get to know, get to know your family. Get to know people here. Everybody needs somebody. Amen. And you just might be the person that they need. But let's continue worshiping today, and y'all just sing along with us if you know the songs. Just worship. We always tell people, you're always invited to come down here and worship and just praise the Lord with us and be involved. Amen. I like to get in down here where the anointing's flowing. Amen. So if you think, y'all gonna make me preach. Y'all gonna make me preach. If y'all need to get down here where the anointing's flowing. I don't talk to too many people today talking about there's been struggles in their life this week. If you've been struggling this week and you need a touch from the Lord, don't hide way back there. Jesus said, come to me. Amen. So I just encourage you, come on down and worship. See, here we go. Patel, she said, get down here, Mama. She said, come on, Mama. We're coming down here to worship the Lord today. So let's go ahead and let's get up with this next song, and we'll just have you guys come on down and worship with us.
the true worshiper will worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Yes, amen. So that the Lord is seeking such as will worship him. Amen. Yes. If you come to worship today, I love the word of God. It says to come boldly before the throne of grace. Yes. Did you come to church today to just hang out in the outer courts? Mm -hmm. Or did you come to enter into that place of true worship? Did you come in to be a spectator today or did you come in to receive from the Lord today? Hallelujah. Jesus tore the veil. Yes. There's no longer that separation. We can come straight to the throne of grace. And if you read your Bible and you get an idea of what's taking place in heaven, around the throne, the worship that's going on around the throne. Amen. And we're supposed to be emulators of that in our life. And we can enter into that place of worship. Amen. This is one of my favorite worship songs. My wife can tell you the first time we heard this song, we were at a church conference and I had never even heard the radio version of it. I'm not your typical crying preacher. And I bawled like a baby the whole time this song was going on. And I'm still prone to cry when I just listen to this song because I think about my Jesus, amen, and what he's done for us. So I encourage you to enter into a special place of worship right now. Set aside whatever you're thinking about. Cast your cares upon him. Yes. Find you a spot. Worship yes. the Lord and don't worry about anything else right now. Amen. Yeah. Amen.
each and every last one is holy, holy. $500, but it's about a $40,000 plus dollar motorcycle with all the custom work done to it. 
So if you're interested in buying a raffle ticket, if you want to see one of these guys, we have a couple friends of mine. I told them, I said, I've already got hit up with this. we got friends that go to your church, and they done reached out to me. But if you're interested, it sounds like a lot of money. It is a $500 ticket, but it's all going to a good cause. Now, I should have told you that after you brought your offering. Okay, guys, so y'all still got to bring your tithes and offerings to this church first. Amen. But see these guys, if you're interested in any, any questions about that raffle, how to get tickets, they'll be helping you out with that today. Amen. But um, this is the day that the Lord has made. We're supposed to rejoice and be glad. And we know that the Lord said that he loves a cheerful giver. So without much ado, we're just going to allow you to bring your offerings today. Just a reminder, Turbyville Children's Home, and I still need to make that phone call for you unless you got one. It's good? Okay. Turbyville Children's Home, this is a, it's a home that we have in South Carolina. It's part of the Falcons Children's Home, which is in North Carolina. They're reaching out and helping a lot of children with special needs from difficult family situations. They're about to become a South Carolina center for foster care, being able to place children directly in Christian homes for foster care. Uh, they need some help. They need support. They need money. They need items. All this good stuff for this quarter. We are raising funds for that. You can give it to the jug over here or you can give online. Can we have our online sign up there? You can give online. Go to our website, trwcmonroe.org or .com or you can go to that text in church and give right there. You will have to set that up if it's your first time using it on your smartphone. Tithes and offerings right here in this basket. Some people's already got ahead of y'all and started putting theirs in here before church even started. They said they're getting the blessing first. Amen. Amen. So what we're going to do, the Bible says bring, bring your tithe, bring your offering. So we're going to allow you to come today and bring your offering right down here. As soon as we do this, we're going to dismiss the kids to go to their classes today also. I'm going to ask you to stand up one more time as we just bless the offering. Father God, we give you glory and praise today for all that you do, all that you've already done. Lord, see that it's already been sown, Lord, believing for a great harvest that's not yet come. But Lord, we're just praying to see fruit of the harvest in this house again today. Lord, we just pray for the offering that's received, that you bless the gift and the giver. Lord, for every dollar, every cent that's brought into this, into this church to be sown into your kingdom. We thank you for leading us and guiding us into how to best sow this. As we're sowing into many different ministries, God, we just continue to bless you. So as we bring these offerings to you today, we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So you guys come on down and bring your offering. And kids, after you finish him in your parents' pockets, you can go back to your classes. Amen. Guys, also I do ask, I did not have this information until just now. We just got word that um, Bobby Steele, keep him and his family in prayer. Most of y'all know his mother was uh, turned over to hospice care last week, and it was just kind of a day-by-day -day thing. We just got word that his mother just passed away. So just please keep Bobby and his family in prayer. And uh, we just I'll be re talking to Bobby here in a little while, find out what, what we can do for them. But um, just please keep them in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. There's Greg. I missed. I thought Greg was playing hooky today. I was looking. He was just trying to avoid the little Debbies. Amen. Amen. I'm still in worship mode. I don't know. It's like y'all think we're crazy when we talk about this stuff coming up close, getting in the anointing. And, all. Yeah, and God can move anywhere. I know that. But sometimes when we just step out of our comfort zones just a little bit Amen. step up and say here I am God I don't want to start preaching about blind Bartimaeus again but that stays in my spirit all the time Amen. Amen. you ain't going to make me shut up Amen. I don't care I'm going to be like King David again I brought it up last week I don't care what anybody else thinks Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to praise my Lord Amen, Amen. and I, I honestly believe church when we, when we get into that place when we just worship the Lord and Spirit and the truth. I think I have to preach about that sometime soon. Amen. But right now we're going to pick up kind of where we left off last week. If you uh, weren't here last week, I will encourage you to go on um, YouTube or our Facebook page. We stream it. Chip's not here today. Do we have to pray for Chip? Chip had to go out of town and caught a flu bug or something and just praying for him. But Melissa is filling in for him about there. We had to lower the camera down a little bit because a whole lot of <laughs> From where chips usually at by there but this will be is streaming on facebook live will be later it'll also be on youtube probably by tomorrow morning but if you missed last week it's kind of important you go back to that i got a little tough on you last week thank y'all for coming back 
Well, y'all go ahead and tell me. We're coming back again next week too, Pastor Dan. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I talked to somebody this week and they said, Pastor, so no, we, we need to hear the tough stuff. We 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 don't need to just the, the sweet stuff all the time. We gotta hear some stuff. But I just want to jump in. I've I've got extra notes today, so I want to get through this. But we talk we talk a lot about Jesus' life. We've just finished up kind of a whole series talking about Jesus' life, his ministry. But his physical life on this earth, we know that Jesus was born of a virgin. No doubts, no doubts about that. He lived a sinless life. Amen. Amen. He lived a seemingly ordinary life for his first 30 years, but then something happened. He went down by he went down by the Jordan River and he got baptized by John the Baptist. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him like a dove. Amen. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, and by doing that, he was activated into his earthly ministry. Amen. Amen. So then the fun stuff started. So here's Jesus. We'd like to think that he just got activated into ministry. That's a word the Lord gave me in my prayer time, that he was activated into ministry when the Holy Spirit came upon him. You'd like to think that that happened, and Jesus immediately went out into the streets and immediately went out and started healing people and started preaching the gospel and started having miracles pour out everywhere. But it didn't happen just like that. If you read the Bible, you're going to find out. It didn't happen just like that. The Bible keeps it real. And that's the reason we got to stick with it. It just wasn't that easy. The first thing that Jesus had to do after he was baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, activated in the ministry, was he had to face temptation. And we talked about this last week. The name of this little sub-series is In the Face of Temptation. And we talked about this a lot. But Jesus had to go face temptation. Let's go ahead and have Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 through 3 up here. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. I'm going to pause there for just a moment. I felt like I didn't put this in my notes, but I felt like I needed to elaborate just a moment on this. We know that the Bible says that let no man say that he was tempted by God. Okay. I have heard people say that this contradicts the other scripture. It does not. It does not say that he was tempted by God. He was, he was led by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil. Okay? And we know that the, the Bible also tells us lead, in the 23rd Psalm, one of our favorites, and lead us not into temptation. So we don't, we don't want to be led into temptation, but we just got to see what Jesus did here. He was, he was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. And again, Father God, we bless you and thank you for your word today and all that you do. We give you glory and ask your blessing on it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The same Holy Spirit that came upon Jesus to equip him and empower him for his earthly ministry is now the same Holy Spirit that led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. None of this sounds very fun, does it? Am I a little bit loud? Y'all okay? All right. He was led into face temptation. He wasn't just led. This is the important part of this. And I, I got stuck on this part for a while. He was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He wasn't just led into face temptation. He was led to face the tempter directly. Amen. Amen. Listen, guys, we get tempted all the time, but many times we're not face to face with the devil. That we say, Well, we probably are more often than you think. You just, he just don't look like what you expect him to. But Jesus had to go straight in. Here, let, here I am. Let the devil come at me and be tempted. But we've got to remember, that why would God do this? Why didn't he just turn him loose to go in Jerusalem and start preaching and healing people and spreading the good news? God always knows what he's doing. Can I get an amen? Amen. Because half the time we act like God don't have a clue. Yes. When things aren't going right in your life, we act like, what's wrong with you, God? I didn't wake up this morning and expect this to happen. This ain't what I prayed for. Amen. Oh my. God always knows what he's doing. We know that Jesus came to this earth as a, as a perfect sacrifice for us. For our sin. He came to make a way for our salvation. Amen. Amen. He also came to set us up that we can receive the Holy Spirit for ourselves. But we can't forget the fact that Jesus came and lived a, sin, a sinless life set before us as our example. 
right. That's when we start talking about holiness. Be holy for he is holy. Jesus showed us that it's possible. But did he show us that it was going to be easy? First thing Jesus had to do was face temptation. Jesus had to go face temptation. Why? Because every one of us will face temptation. Some of you probably already face temptation today. Or you will. I'm thankful my wife changed her mind. We was going to go to Gold Corral and eat today. It's like, dear Lord. I'm trying to eat good. And you're trying to send me to a place that's got a, it's got a dessert bar. <laughs> Plus all that other good stuff. And I was like, I, I'm going to have to go in there and eat my six ounces of meat, two vegetables, and a, and a healthy carb, Sam. Do you know there's such things as healthy carbs? <laughs> I can introduce you to those. But it's so easy we face temptation. But Jesus faced temptation because we will all face temptation. If you will hear what God is going to tell you through this right here today, you'll understand that not only will we face temptation, but He's going to give us the opportunity to overcome temptation as well. Amen? Amen. Uh, my message is kind of chopped up today. I, I, I started to split this into two parts, but I'm like, I can't. I just, I got to get it done. When you know somebody that accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior or you're in a church service and you see somebody come down to an altar and give their heart to the Lord, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to pray for that person. Yes. If somebody's down here praying, I want you praying for these people down here. If you're not coming to an altar and you're in a church service, somebody's down here praying, I want you praying for them. Amen. Especially somebody that just accepted Jesus as their Savior because you're going to know this, that that person has just got the devil's attention. As soon as you say, yes, Jesus, it's like the devil just wakes up and they're about to face the greatest temptation of their life and that temptation is going to be to pull away from what the Lord just did in their life and to pull back into their old way of life. Amen? Amen. And we talked about this last week. you got to remember, the devil knows you better than you think. Mm -hmm. He knows your weaknesses. That's right. He knows where the button is. He knows what you'll say yes to and he knows what you'll say no to. And I said this last week, the devil's very good at what he does. He's been at it for a long time. He's been practicing for a long time. And he's had great success. And when he's, and he likes to build upon that success, he finds out what works and he builds upon it. And we like to act like the devil's a dummy, but the devil's not a dummy. He's slick. He's smooth. He knows how to do this stuff. We talked a little bit about the Facebook algorithm last week. Amen. It's like he knows how to get into your mind. But if you, if you think, let me put it like this. If you think the devil's so dumb that he can convince a third of God's angels to turn their back on God and follow him, but you think that he can't tempt you, you better hang on because that, that sermon on pride is coming up real soon. Okay? So this is what I'm building up to. I want you to hang on to just hang on to this because we're all going to be tempted. And I'm talking about somebody who just got saved. We've got to pray for them extra hard because they don't have all the information. They need teaching. They need nurturing. They need discipleship. Amen. 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 Uh, guys, listen. There's, there's. I just want to be nice, Jerry. There's, there's more than an hour and a half a week. There's more to it than just coming to church on Sunday morning and getting your Jesus fix. Okay? Well, there's true discipleship that needs to take place. And like I said, somebody just accepted Jesus. They need prayer. They need mentorship. Because like I said, we all know this. The devil's going to come at them hard. Um, let's look at Jesus. He's our, he's our example. So Jesus, here he is. He had just fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. But now watch this. The devil knew that. The devil knew that Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 days. He knew that Jesus had been praying. And, and he knew this because he'd been watching. He'd been waiting for the perfect time. And he was trying to catch Jesus at that place of weakness when he thought he had a chance to come against him. Amen. Amen. And knowing that Jesus was physically hungry, the temptation came as food. Y'all want to be real with me today? Come on. <laughs> 40 days and 40 nights of fasting. Most of us can't go four hours. <laughs> Y'all think, think I'm joking. You know what I'm talking about. You're trying to be good and you're watching TV at 9 o'clock and a Burger King commercial comes on. You're tearing up the kitchen trying to find something to eat. Amen. You're in there mad because Brenda ate the last little cup of ice cream. You, you, hit, you thought you hit it. 
And it was gone. Amen. You get mad. Y'all, come on now. Ain't nobody going to be real with me in God's house today. You get mad because you, you think you hid some Ritz crackers in the back of the cabinet. Well, thank God them Ritz crackers is there. Them Ritz crackers is gone too. <laughs> you about to get in the car. Then, then all of a sudden you're posting on Facebook. Anybody deliver ice cream? <laughs> I'll see if you've been looking at my Facebook this week. Amen. But it's, it's real. We get this way. We can't make it anytime. You know, it's not God that's trying to make you blow your diet. Amen. Okay? It's not God that's telling you to pull in the Krispy Kreme because the hot donut light is on. Amen. And I had, I had to go back and put this in there because I, I made that note. This is no lie. We talked about these smart devices listening to us. I made that note and I was sitting this and I opened up an email within within two minutes of putting this note in there. And I had an email from Krispy Kreme Donuts to get a, to get a dozen donuts for $2. Man. So it, it's, it's got to be the devil, right? Amen. It's got to be the devil. Amen. But seriously, the devil came to Jesus in the first place where he hit him was his flesh. His flesh, his hunger. What he was physically going through at that time in his life. That's what he hit him with. And our scripture from last week, we were in 1 John chapter 2, 15 through 17. We're going to pull that back up. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. And again, go back to last week if you need more teaching on that. But today specifically we're talking about the lust of the flesh. We gave this little definition last week. The lust of the flesh, the animal nature with cravings which incite to sin, satisfying the sin nature of self, feeding the flesh. Feeding the flesh. That's what the devil likes for us to do is feed this flesh. Amen. And I told you this last week. If, it, if This is to me what the lust of the flesh is, is if it feels good, do it. If it tastes good, eat it. Drink it. If it makes you feel good. But we've got to hold on to that because God's word gives us a very specific prophetic warning in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. I didn't want all that, but you have to, I forgot to put all that. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's a, that's a warning, church. we got to understand. If we don't know, if we don't know the truth, we will fall for the lie. If we don't know it's wrong, we will do the wrong things. We have to embrace this. That My people, some, one version says perish. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Now, this is where I come in. I'm not always going to make you happy. Say, that's okay, Pastor. And we, we, have, to, we have to be real with this. I, I am, I'm your pastor. I, I function within a specific calling of the fivefold ministry. You can go to Ephesians chapter 4 and read more about this. God called me to be a pastor. You can ask my wife. I did not want to be a pastor. I wanted to be an evangelist. I wanted to go around and make a mess for other churches for the pastor to clean up. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was that's what I when I knew I was called in the ministry, I got excited. I said, Brenda, get ready. We're gonna travel the country. We're gonna preach in different churches and sing. I'm gonna go into the studio and I'm gonna make a CD. We're gonna sell the CD in the church, foyers and all that. And God woke me up one night and said, Who do you think you are? He said, You don't get to pick your calling. That's right. I'll preach about that later. But as your pastor, I do. I like to have fun on Sunday mornings. I really do. I, I love. I love to come. I think we're supposed to have a good time in church. Amen. I love to come in. I like to have a little bit of fun. But I'm, I'm just to be honest. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here to make you feel good about your life and try to justify the sin in your life. I'm not. That's not who I am. And um, you're just not going to find that. I'm, I'm here to help equip you for your own work in ministry. Again, you go back to Ephesians chapter 4. Talking about the fivefold ministry is for the equipping of the saints for work in ministry. Amen. Josh said, that made me feel good. He just called me a saint. That's what saints are. It's, it's, not, it's not, you're the laity. You're the saints. You're being equipped for work. Right. In ministry, God's got a plan for you. God's got a call on your life. God has a purpose for you. And here's the thing. In order for, for that to happen, you need the truth. You need to understand what God is telling you that's going to equip you to overcome the devil. 
And it's not always popular to preach like this, but it's always needed. And with that, I need you to understand that this lust of the flesh is very real and it affects every single one of us. All of us. That's you, that's your neighbor, that's me, all of us. We all face temptation. Nobody's exempt from that. And I need you to understand that. It's not just food. There's many other things what the lust of the flesh entails. Now the great thing is, as, as Christians and spirit-filled men and women of God, we have the Holy Spirit within us that's going to give us discernment and going to tell us when things are, that's not for you. You shouldn't be doing that. We get that idea in our mind, but the Bible also gives us a list. Amen. Amen. Is it okay if I share a list with you today? Oh, yeah. That way you can't, I love this because you can't get mad at me because this is God's word. Amen. This is not stuff I'm making up. But the Bible gives us a list. And let me just tell you, you've got to know the word of God. The Holy Spirit said he'll bring back to your remembrance every word that he's spoken. But you've got to have it in here to do that. So let's start getting into Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. I hope you all will mark this and go read some more about this later. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary to one another, so, so, that, you do not do, so that you do not do the things that you wish, but, you are led, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. There's a constant struggle between our flesh and our spirit. And that's just, that's just the truth, guys. Let me tell you when that's going to stop. When, he when you die him. here naturally and you go to glory where Jesus meets us here in the air. Hallelujah. Amen. That's when that struggle is going to stop. So until that time, you need to be equipped to face that struggle. I've talked about this a lot in different terms. But there's, it's just a constant. The Spirit, the Spirit wants to lead us into the ways of righteousness. Amen. The flesh wants to lead us into the places of sin. Yeah. It's a spiritual battle. And you cannot fight spiritual battles with natural means. Guys, it's just like, how many people in here has ever been on a diet? How many times a day are you tempted to cheat on that diet? How many of y'all, if you're on a diet, are safe to be left alone with a pack of M&Ms? <laughs> Peanut butter pills. Peanut butter pills. I mean, but you understand, this... this that sounds simple, but if left to the flesh, we're going to eat them Reese's Cups. That's Especially right. if it's the miniatures and the gold paper. Right. We don't want to talk about that. I'll be had some of them today if I talk about those. But we got to have the Holy Spirit with us. This is why it's so important for us to continue to preach and teach and talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit and walking in this because it's a spiritual battle. And we got to have the Spirit to fight against the flesh. If we don't, the flesh is going to win every single time. And if we don't know that, we're just going to be thinking, well, I'm just hungry. So I'm supposed to eat. Amen. Amen. We had a doctor one time made a comment and said, just don't eat. <laughs> you want to lose weight? It's simple. Don't eat. <laughs> well, thank you, doctor. <laughs> I need to see a, ne a, a different doctor the next time I come in. That's the way, that's the, way the flesh reacts, okay? I'm not talking to you no more. You're trying to hold, you're trying to hold me accountable. I'm, I'm not talking to you. I'm going to get on Facebook. I'm going to find somebody that tells me that my diet that I'm eating is just fine and dandy with me. We've got to have the Holy Spirit. Paul wrote that to the Galatians. Can I share a little bit of church history with you today? I, I don't do a lot of this on Sunday mornings, but I, I felt inclined to do this. Galatia was not a city. It was a region. This was in, in Paul's epistles, this was a little bit different. This was not written to one specific church, but it was written to a group of churches. That means that there was more than one church that was struggling with the lust of the flesh. When he wrote this, they were struggling. They were failing. But I want to share a little bit about what Paul was dealing with here. One of the struggles that Paul was dealing with was with this group of people that are called Judaizers. Judaizers, and I don't have any notes up here. I'll, if you need notes, let me know. I'll give you a copy of this. But Judaizers, these were people who were Jewish converts who accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. They recognized Jesus as, Jesus as the Messiah, but they believed that grace alone was inadequate for salvation. They thought you had to add some law to that. They thought you had to bring the works of the law. They wanted to attach the works to the law to grace, and that's what we call legalism. Amen? But here's the thing. As I read about this, I studied about this, and um, they also wanted to discredit Paul, and they called him a second-hand apostle. 
because he wasn't there with Jesus, because Jesus called him on the Damascus Road, and they said that he was inferior to Peter and James, that their, that their teaching was bad. But these legalistic people charged Paul with compromising the gospel by removing the law, the demands of the law, because he preached grace. He preached grace. I'm about to move into a series talking about grace, and we're going to be talking a lot about it. But it, he did that. They, they claimed that he did that to make the Christian faith more palatable, easier to accept to the Gentiles out there. But Paul, I love his reading. He keeps it very real about grace. But he also keeps it very real about the lust of the flesh. And he gives pretty clear instructions in both of our lives about our spiritual life and the flesh of what we're supposed to do when we get tempted. Now, y'all pay attention because this is, this is the list, okay? Galatians 15, chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. Now, the works of the flesh, which is the lust of the flesh, are evident, which is adultery. Now, I'm going to pause. I'm going to talk briefly about each of these. Adultery is having... Physical relationships with somebody that is not your husband or your wife. That's adultery. Fornication. Fornication is having, I'm just going to use the term physical relationships. Physical relationships with anyone that's not your husband or wife. Which means if you're not married, you should not be having these physical relationships. Amen. Amen. Nobody wants to hear this. Not this day and time. Not in Western civilization. Not Western Christianity. We want to make up the rules. But then you got uncleanness. That's talking about the mind. That's the thoughts. Thinking unclean thoughts. Okay? That's lust of the flesh. Lewdness. That's acting out from those thoughts. That's doing the things that you're thinking about that you shouldn't be thinking about. Idolatry. Very simple. Making anything bigger than God. I can really get into an argument with y'all about that. I'm not going to. We'll save that for another day. Just hold on. Anything you make bigger than God. Sorcery. Well, Pastor, we don't play sorcery. When was the last time we and Brenda just talked about this yesterday? Can't wait to get that fortune cookie at the Chinese restaurant. Horoscopes. Y'all think I'm joking? Them little games that you play on Facebook that... It, oh, if I do this, I'm going to be this. This is, what I, this is what I'll do. All this little stuff, it sounds innocent enough, but that's the devil trying to trick you into sorcery. Sorcery, witchcraft. Play it around with some of this stuff. I'm, I'm, just, I'm not going to go real deep with this, but you know, I could jump into talking about Halloween and all this other stuff, but this Wiccan stuff and all this other, you know. Ouija board. We, we ain't talking about Ouija board. Them things are, I, I, I was scared of them things when I wasn't saved. Me too. So, I mean, but it's, it's, a, it's a spirit. It really is. You're playing with the devil. Yeah. There, there's a lot more. And like I said, some of the stuff sounds innocent enough. Um, magic 8 Ball. How many people grew up with a Magic 8 Ball? All right, let's go back to 8th grade. How many people does he love me? <laughs> you know who I was looking at when I said that too, right? Yes, yes, yes. Does she love me? Does she think I'm cute? You know we all grew up with this stuff. Are we teaching our kids? Are we buying our kids a magic eight ball? Tell them, yeah, go, go ask the magic eight ball. In a cell, you know, that, there's some sorcery involved in it. Hatred. We're not supposed to be hating. Contentions, arguments, jealousies, being jealous because somebody just got a new Harley Davidson. Outburst of wrath. Sometimes we just got to keep it to ourselves. Amen. Oh, my God. Please don't make me say it, God. Outburst of wrath. Is that only verbally? Modern day, 2024, can it, can it come like this? Can it come when you just can't keep your mouth shut on Facebook? When you got to yell out of something on Facebook, when you got to send hateful text messages, when you got to do all this stuff, outburst of wrath, just because you think it don't mean you need to say it. Yeah. We just have to be careful with that. I mean, I'm just being real with you about this. Selfish ambitions, it's all about me. Dissensions. That's uh, arguments and fights within yourself. Heresies, that's within the church. Not believing in church doctrine or fighting over church doctrine. Envy, you can't stand somebody because of what they got. Murders, drunkenness, and you know, just because I see you in Walmart with a whole buggy full of wine, you know, just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge you. Rivalries, do y'all know what that means? Going to big, loud, drunken parties. 
That's literally what that means. Hanging out in big, loud, drunken parties. Hanging out in the bars. And the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the past. This is not the first time Paul had to have this conversation with these people. Did y'all catch that? Paul said, I never told you this before, but y'all didn't listen to me. Now I've got to write you another letter, and I'm going to have to come back and visit you because you didn't listen to me in the past because I've already told you those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I want the kingdom of God in my life. Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I want to sleep good at night. I want to walk through this world with the peace of God upon me. Amen. Amen. I don't want to walk through this world scared to death. If I die today, then I'm going to go to hell. Amen. I want the kingdom of God in my life. Amen. And he's put, he said, if you live like this, if you're operating in the lust of the flesh, you're not going to have that. This is so important because this is not only prepares us for the fact that temptation will come to us, it also equips us with the tools and knowledge to confront and overcome the tempter when he comes at us. Did I tell you all already? Because you will be tempted. You will face temptation. It will happen. Um, how did Jesus overcome temptation when it was presented to him? This is the part everybody's heard this preaching. We all talk about this. How did he do it? Are you ready for this? It's real simple. Here it is, verse 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But when he answered, he said, when Jesus talked to the devil, he answered, he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus overcame this temptation, the lust of the flesh, with the word of God. Amen. Amen. If you've been in church any time at all, you've heard that preached. He used the word of God. Against the devil. Because the devil can't stand up to this. Amen? Amen. He didn't just speak it. He had knowledge. Yes. He had, and yes, I know that Jesus is the Word and was, was the Word and the Word was with God. I know all that. But he had knowledge of the Scripture. He was speaking the Scripture with authority. Standing on the Word of God without compromise. Amen. This is the problem. We want to start compromising everything now. We want to change this word to fit our lives instead of changing our lives to fit this word. That is not popular preaching. That will not fill up a church. That will not gain you YouTube followers. I'm just going to tell you this. But it will change your life if you will allow God to impart that into you. Because we cannot compromise on the word of God. Not if you want to stand up to the devil. Because Jesus was unwilling to compromise. We're going to talk more about this, but he was standing on the word of the God, standing on the word of God without compromise. And when you do that, you will win against the devil. Amen. Period. You will face temptation. The devil will try you. If he was not afraid to try Jesus, why would he be afraid to try you? And he's had another 2,000 plus years since then to get better at what he does. I know y'all get tired of preachers telling you to read the Word. But you got to do it. This right here, the Logos, the written, spoken, inspired Word of God. You know what the Word of God says about itself? I love this, Jerry, I told you. Jerry, every time we have prime timers and he preaches, he's all up in my message for Sunday on Friday. <laughs> what does the Word of God say about itself? Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 to 13. For the Word of God is living... Amen. Amen. This is alive in your life today. It's powerful. There is. We, we like to say about power in the blood. There's power in the word. But there's power in the word of God. We have to understand there's great power in the word of God. It's living. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. Whatever the enemy comes at you with, the word of God is, is stronger than <laughs> Piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit. The Word of God will get right to His point in your life. The Word of God will point out those places of error in your life and it will strengthen those weakened places in your life. It's, it's, an, it's, it's a division of the soul and spirit and it's the joints and the marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Here's why some people don't like to read the Bible because when you start reading the Bible, they get under conviction. Because when you're reading this living Word and all of a sudden this Word pops up in your mind and says, Oh Lord, I'm doing that right now. I'm thinking that right now. I'm guilty of that in my life right now. How am I supposed to deal with that? The Word will tell you that also. But there is no creature hidden from His sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of Him who we must give account. 
Whatever you're going through in your life, God already knows about it. But when we get into the Word of God and we're reading the Word of God and we're studying the Word of God, we become aware of it. We become aware. There's an awareness in our life of things that we need to do. But when you take that great description of what the Word of God is and you add Ephesians 6 verse 17 to it and take on the helmet of salvation, but the part I want to talk about is and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. When we take on the word of the Spirit, which is the word of the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, we can overcome temptation. We can walk in holiness. Amen. You can live a life pleasing to God. Amen. I didn't add this to my notes, but I was thinking about this this morning on my way to church. The sword of the Spirit. We like kids' church. How many people had kids' church and you did sword drills? I think Brenda still does that with the kids every now and then. Does sword drills. You call out a scripture so you can find it first. It's important to do that. I was taken back to King David before. Well, he was already king. But when David fought Goliath, and he went at him with that sling and those stones. But he had already spoke to the enemy. He said, I'm going to cut your head off. I love it. He's got a rock. I'm going to cut your head off. Goliath laughing. You going to cut my head off? All you got is a bag of stones. He said, I got the word of God. Amen. I got the word of God. And Amen. I'm coming at you with the word of God, the sword of the spirit. And David, after he hit him with that rock and knocked him down, what did David do? He walked over and picked up the, the enemy's own sword and cut his head off. Why do we need the Word of God in our life? Because that's how we're going to overcome the enemy. Amen. And without it, you're going, to, you're going to fail. But if you're using the Word of God, you can't overcome temptation. Amen. I, I, I believe that I'm preaching to somebody today. We're all faced with temptation. But we don't have to all fall for it. The devil's good at it. But we have to understand we can live a life pleasing to God. One of our verses for this year, and I don't think I'll have a slide for it, Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things will be added to you. Back to it, priorities. I told you I'm going to talk about this a lot this year. Where are your priorities? What are your priorities? I hope that Jesus is your number one priority. Amen. I hope that living a kingdom life is your priority. Amen. I hope that living a life pleasing to God is your priority because when you make those things your priorities, God takes care of everything that you need in your life. That's right. You will have righteousness, joy, and peace. Without it, you're not going to have that. What's your priority? If it's pleasing God, you have to start right here with the Word. This is where it starts. You have to read it. You have to learn it. Okay? You have to understand it. The most important part, you have to apply it to your life. Amen. We were just talking about this. Otherwise, if, if the only thing you're doing is coming into church listening to the Word of God and you're not applying it, that's like watching workout videos on YouTube instead of working out. <laughs> that's like reading diet books while you're eating ice cream and cheeseburgers. Amen. Amen. You have to apply this in your life. And I was getting ready to close up here, but I asked you, have you already fallen victim to this lust of the flesh? Have you already fallen victim to the temptation? How do you deal with it? It starts with coming to an altar. You guys can go ahead and start playing whenever you're ready. This can be a hard thing for some people to step out of that pew and come down and say, here I am, Jesus. I've, I've messed up. I've fallen short. I need to come to you today and I need to ask you for me. Coming down to an altar and just making things right with God. And I, I want to preach just a minute on that. You know how hard it, you know how hard it is to make things right with God? You say, God, you know I messed up. Here I am, Lord. Can you forgive me? God's going to forgive you like that. But now you've got to repent. You've got to turn from that and don't go back to it again. Amen. You got to pick up the sword of the spirit. You got to read it. You got to find understanding. You got to apply it.
me to say this today. My brother Jerry Campbell's here with us today. Jerry was not supposed to be here today. He's supposed to be in Georgia. C circumstances change. God has Jerry here today. And I just want you to know, Jerry has an anointing on his life to pray for people. People who are suffering, people who are sick, people who are afflicted. And they've been healed. I'm one of those. And I stand on that in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've got sickness in your body today, if you've got pain, if you've got things in your life, I ask you to come down here and ask Jerry to pray for you today. We'll anoint you and pray for you and believe with you for God to heal you. So right now, and I'm going to turn this microphone off. If you're sitting in a pew right now, and you're like, well, I will go down there and get up. Okay? If you're in that pew right now, and it's in your mind, well, I would go to get up and come to the pew. Come to the, come to the altar. If you're a sinner, well, we really should go down there and get prayer. Come down and get prayer. I say this all the time. Don't get home today and say, I should have went to the altar. I encourage you to come down and find a spot at this altar and get prayer today. If you got sickness in your body, has the doctor given you a diagnosis that you don't want to agree with, come down and let us pray for you today. And I will believe with you that God will bring the healing that you need in your life. In Jesus' name. There's plenty of room in these altars. You guys come on down and pray. Again, if you need special prayer or anything specific, let us know. And let your prayer be made.
God is touching and healing. We believe that people were healed in these altars today. We believe that people were restored. I'm, I'm waiting to hear you talk about walking across the parking lot. And all of a sudden, the dizziness was gone. And I stand in agreement with that with you in Jesus' name. Thank you for all that you